Um, okay, so saying what's a good bow for beginners is a, is a misnomer because what beginner? <laughs> Safer yet. Right. Is this beginner somebody who doesn't do any sports at all? Is this a beginner who has played baseball and soccer their whole life, but has never mountain biked and snowboarded and skied and done these, not extreme, I don't like to call them extreme sports. If it can't kill you, it's not extreme. Um, um, is it someone who is a fast learner? They're going to be a beginner for three days, and then they're going to be an intermediate. Um is this person someone who's generally fearful or they're generally a go-getter? Do they give up easily or do they stick with stuff and they're willing to take the hits and take the shots and take the pain to progress and learn? So it's so wide and varied that to say, oh, well, this is a great beginner boat to me is nonsense. That's a hard um, sell. Huh? Yeah. That's a hard sell for you. Just one boat for all beginners. Y yeah. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I think there definitely are boats which, when you start to generalize on what you're dealing with, people who are going to be, let's just assume for the most part, white, white water is not skiing. White water is a strange sport. It's, it's, it takes a special kind of person to say, I want to go do that. Because generally people are spooked by water. Fear of drowning is a real thing. Um, even though you've got more chance of drowning in your bath than you do in a river. It doesn't matter. Reality is irrelevant to perceived environment, right? So um, the kind of person that says, oh, I want a whitewater kayak is probably not going to be someone who's very timid, very cautious. Um, you know, it's going to be somebody who's willing to put themselves out there a little bit, get out of their comfort zone, um, I think. And so generally speaking, I don't think that putting beginners in creek boats is a good thing. It's great for one day. Yeah. You know, if you want to take your friend kayaking and I'd love to try that. And you, depending on where you live, but let's say you're in the Southeast and you take them to the Nantahala or the Hiawassee, right? You can put a rank beginner at the put in the Nantahala in a modern Creek boat. And chances are they will make it all the way down to, is that my phone or your phone? Oh, yeah. Um, chances are, they will make it all the way down to Lesser Wessa without flipping it, which will be a positive experience, right? It'll be a good experience. Yep. Um, but to go from there and to learn edging, to learn how to eddy turn properly, not just drift into eddies, but learn how to go into eddies, to learn how to surf, to learn how, how important it is to hit waves head on and not hit them at any old angle at all. Um, you want to have a boat that's going to be forgiving, a boat that's going to reward you when you do it correctly. It might give you a little bit of a little bit of a tap on the hand when you don't do it correctly, but isn't going to punish you. So, you know, you don't want to be putting beginners in six foot playboats, right? I mean, I know people do, but I don't think it's the ideal, right? You don't want to be putting people in seven and a half foot full slices. Again, I know people do, but it's not the ideal. And for the same reason, I don't think you want to be putting beginners in giant creek boats. People do, but I don't think it's ideal. Okay. For, for a completely opposite reason on the other end of the spectrum. Right. And so, um, you know, I, there was a class of boat called the river runner back in the day, back in the day, 15 years ago, something like that. The River Runner, the playful River Runner. The most recent one was the Jackson Fun Runner. Yep. Right. Precursor so, to the antics, right? 
Well, no, see, I don't think, no, I don't think boats like the Antics, the Glide, um, the, I keep wanting to calling it the Hot Lips. It's not the Hot Lips, the Hot Wheel, Hot Ride. Yeah. Hot, hot Wheel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I keep thinking of Hot Lips Hulahan. Um, <laughs> a mash. Um, so I don't think those are great beginner boats, except for those beginners who are those go-getters, right? People who are not easily dissuaded, people who are not going to give up when they get flipped over and over again, they kind of get the roll quickly, right? So they learn to roll in the pool in an afternoon, and then they're off to the class two, three river. And every time they flip over, half the time they roll, half the time they swim, and it doesn't bother them in the slightest bit either way. Then those boats are great, right? Because you're going to have a really fast progression if it doesn't make you give up. If you don't get punished, you don't give up, right? So I, I know there are beginners who get in glides. You know, I've got a number of them who've walked in here. They took a class. They tried a number of boats at the local club. The glide was the boat they liked the most because it was the easiest to catch the waves and surf because it just parks on a wave. It just paddles yeah. in and it parks. And it's like there's like the delay, like the, the pause button on it where you just, it doesn't matter how big it's, you just hit this pause button and you can just sit there and it'll just park. And there's not a lot of boats that do that, right? They're all kind of trying to do something and it'll yeah. just sit there. But that tail is tiny. So when you come off the wave, the, the eddies are catching it and you get flipped over and swirled around. But I've had beginners who paddled the boat, loved the boat, bought the boat, and they learned to roll on Saturday and this is Wednesday, right? Type yeah. thing. But that's not normal, right? Yeah. Not normal, okay? On the other hand, there's some people who... They liked the experience. They enjoyed it. They're kind of chicken. Maybe they took a kayak class because they're inherently scared of water and they're trying to overcome that fear. I had a friend who was like that. She was petrified of water. Couldn't swim. Couldn't swim a lick. Absolutely <clears throat> petrified of water. Couldn't put her head underwater in the bath. Like, I don't know what she did as a child. Did she never, like, blow bubbles? In the, but yeah. Not, right? So, um, <laughs> But she took kayak classes because she wanted to overcome that fear. Creek boat's what she needs, right? So there's going to be a class two paddler at most, maybe easy class three. The biggest, roundest, fattest boat that never flips, that's her. She should really be rafting, but she wants to kayak, right? So, you know, so then you've got those people, right? But so the Jackson Fun Runner, which is discontinued, I think uh, Piranha had like the Inner Zone, you know, Liquid Logic back in the day had the Gus and the Hoss. Wasteboard had the Diesel. You know, Dagger had the GT, um, you know. But these were playful river runners, right? You could run a river. If you lent upstream, it went, ah, naughty boy. If you land downstream and, and going into an eddy, you felt it carve, you know, as you went in the eddy, you could feel the boat move. A creek boat just goes waffle, 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 stop. Waffle, 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 out. Oh, I'm going to turn now. Turn when you feel like it. Lean any way you like. Doesn't flip over. Keep going, right? Because it's made to not die on class five, right? Right. You can get away with murder. And half the time on class five, you've got to be leaning all kinds of wrong ways in order to get over stuff. And, you know, so, yeah. and they're great at that. You don't learn anything. You don't know how to paddle. So, I mean, I did the booster, right? Um, which was, the idea was a modern GT fun runner in his own, you know, type boat. Um, easy to roll. Got to park on a wave like the glide. So it'll park like the glide. It's got a small enough tail to where the back of the boat will sink into a wave. So it'll just park there and surf. But it's not squirty, so they're not getting flipped over all the time. But if you lean upstream, it goes, uh-uh. Is it a planing hole? Is it a planing hole? It's a planing hole boat. Yeah, absolutely. You want to you want to get in the plane. right off the rocks and right off the bat. Yeah, it just it allows you to paddle into waves immediately. Day two, you know, before you can even roll in white water, you can start paddling into small waves, and the boat's not hooking and trying to peel out the sides like the old round hole boats would do. They were just they were hard to paddle. Like you know, I mean, they're easy to go down river, right? But um. It just it allows you to expand your progression out of just going down the river. You can get into some basically just divots in the water, right? Just a yeah, like a just an oscillating drip in the water that's just enough to get into, and you're really just paddling against the current. 
You're not really surfing, but it's the beginnings, right? Um, and the boat will come up on a plane and you'll feel it'll just be a little bit loose. And then when it's time to get off, you can turn off the wave. And if you lean the right way, it'll carve off the wave. And if you lean the wrong way, it goes, eh, uh, naughty boy. <laughs> Whereas a creek boat won't do that, right? And every now and then it might flip you. That was a very naughty boy. Don't do that again. Okay, bing, learn something today. You know, naughty boy, naughty girl, whatever. <laughs> now people are putting beginners in half slices. Um, and then the new shorter half slices, right? Antics, um, hot, hot, hot whip. Uh, 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 firecracker, uh, you know, but that's a, that's a grabby tail. Yeah. You know, those tails are made yeah. to be easy to squirt for people with poor technique. So right. beaters beater. like me, <laughs> right. But you're not a beginner, right? Beginner yeah. and beater. They both start with B, but you're not the same. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I mean, I can squirt a pretty big boat. You know, yeah. um, but you've got to be spot on with your technique. Those boats, firecracker antics, all those are made for people with really bad edging, bad paddle placement, bad paddle stroke, bad body rotation to still square it on an eddy line. They're good at that, but that means they're really small, which makes them really grabby. Yeah. So once you've got a solid roll and you're rolling every time and you don't mind being underwater a lot of the time, or upside down, then there's no problem with those, but that's not really a beginner, is it? Now you're in the intermediate, yeah. Science, really, you know, by there, you know. So, yeah, there's not a lot of options now. You basically either got to buy an old boat that has really low knees because they remember they all had low knees. Yeah, all them years ago, them boats were them. like two and a half yeah. inches low. Like Even looking at like the Jackson All Star to the Jackson Rock Star, the amount of volume. Yeah. Crazy, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and you go and you look at like the original booster compared to yeah. the modern one. I mean, it's like three inches lower at the knees, and you know, um, and the booster wasn't in a particularly low boat. You, you know, you get into Dominatrix and some of those yeah. other boats, and they're really low. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, so you're getting into those old boats from the you know from the early two thousands, late nineties, early two thousands, mid two I mean mid two thousands. And ergonomically, they're not as good as they are today. The outfitting's not as good. The holes are not as good. They were way more catchy, grabby, sketchy for what you got out of them than today's boats, right? We we're all better at getting those things right. So you can make a boat today that's faster, looser, looser, and more predictable than those boats from 2005. So you get your cherry, you know, or you can have your cake and eat it, right? Yeah, too. Um, and have a wheel on the bottom of it. I almost demoed that hammer just the other day. Uh, uh, Tim Brenner and Festival Water brought some to the Carter K event that, that we hosted. And I was about this close, but it was so bony. It was like one seven at the Carter K. I uh, was like, dude, I don't want to do this to this boat. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think I think the demo boat that he has, um, uh, boat that he put in demo, I think is the lightweight. I mean, the lightweight will still take a beating. You can still... Yeah, I just said it was a pretty boat. I didn't want to mess it up. Oh, yeah. It got really, really manky. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not familiar with the run. Um, even though, you know, Class I'm, two, beginner run around Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. But yeah, it'll do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I always tell people that, like, the lightweight boats, that's not for the guy who's doing five laps a week on the upper green, yeah. you know, on the narrows. That's not your boat because you're going to wear through it. Right. But yeah. if you're, Doing the Teleco one weekend, the Okoe the next weekend, the Wataga the next weekend, the whole Hiwasi the next weekend, the Nola Chucky the next weekend. You can get the lightweight boat and it'll last forever. You know, yeah. but that guy that's doing laps on the green, yeah, you don't want it. <laughs> you know, green talk, you know, talks away, horse pasture, that's you want the heavy one. <laughs> My big run now is Chiola. So, like, yeah, yeah, that still scares me. You know, no, I only did the Chiro once. It only ran one the entire, like the whole decade I lived in the Southeast, the Chiro ran one time. We have releases, though. I know, I know. But yeah. those happened after I'd left, long after I'd left. So I never, like, I, we did one run, and I think it was like, it was, like, it was raining that day. Section yep. four was at like five feet or something like that. That was my last close call. Technical. My antics, my stern grab to my antics, and uh, 
jawbone and I kind of missed my left brace, hit the roll, but when I came up, I was still kind of in a uh, wow. stern squirt, aiming right at hydroelectric rock. <laughs> Right, right. See, that's these hot slices, right? Um, they're a lot of fun, but it can get you in trouble. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so even at an intermediate level, you like on the Akoi, yeah, they're great. You know, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, they're they're a lot of fun, and there's a place for that. And as of course, as your skill set goes up, so you can, you know, Dane Jackson is going to go run the same things in the antics that he's going to go run in the Narvana, most likely. But that's Dane being Dane, right? Um, yeah. But for the rest of the human population, you've got to be calculated about where you take right. a boat like that. And um, as your skill set goes down, so the risk versus reward goes up significantly. Yeah. And you get on something like Section 4, which is not a forgiving river. You know, sure. um, It's not particularly hard, but it's not forgiving. It punishes people uh, for, for making judgment call errors. And... Antics is a fun boat, but that's a tiny tail. Do you like going fast? Like record setting fast? The Jackson Karma Unlimited is the boat for you. Come see it in our store or on the web at festivewater.com. So there's a whole argument for the controllability of a smaller tail, right? So like when I was doing the hammer, I've got a, it's not a squirtable tail, but it's what I call a pivotable tail. So you can land off a drop and you can drop the tail and just turn, you can shorten the water line to turn it faster. But the stern is not going under the water really. It's just, there's a little bit of water on the deck, but it's not, I mean, I have squirted it on like a giant wave. It's more like a rocket loop really, but um, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's got stern like, rocker too, doesn't it? It's got a lot of stern rocker, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so it really was the rocker doing it, you know. And both like the RMX have also got that kind of squishy tail a little bit. And the Letman, um, what's that thing called? Uh, a horny potato, I think it is. Horny, right? Yeah. You know, it's got that that tiny tail. Uh, I okay. What a name! Uh, the what a name, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when when Eskimo called their creek boat the Gambler. I'm like. That's like oh. a climbing rope, maybe. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like you don't really want to take those off of huck them off of anything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um. So, you know, so there's something to be said when you come off a drop and the water does load up on the back, no matter how big your boat is. Yeah. You can have the biggest boat in the world. Enough water lands on the back, it's going to stand up, and the bigger the boat, the less controllable that is. The more it's just going to plop one way or backwards or sideways or just spin you around and dump you on your head. The smaller the tail gets, the more that stand up is in the water. It's slower, it's controlled, and you can correct the angle and then place it where you want and go again. So there is a solid argument for lower volume sterns on boats that you're using in extreme water, but you got to have the skill set that goes with it. So we we circle back to skill set. So it's not even it's not even just the boat. It's the paddler where they're at in their progression, really, yeah. where they're at naturally of ability. What kind of? And then you still want to think about the boat for the situation as well. Yeah, you know. So it's very so, complex. So th there's a lot of things involved, you know. So we obviously we generalize when we go, well, beginners need this and beginners need that, and it's just such a, it's like yeah. it's like when you do a woman's boat. And we're going to do a boat for women. And you do one boat. What, you're just assuming that all women paddle the same? It's just such a ridiculous concept, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I understand the idea that you need a woman's boat because women's center of gravity is different from men. It's lower. They've got yeah, different lower. Yeah. hip, you know, hip to, to knee length. Uh, their hips open differently in the boats. You should have different outfitting. Maybe you don't even need a different woman's boat. Maybe you just need women's outfitting in boats. Um, you know, where the better you know, the works, do I need to keep that under wraps? <laughs> huh? I said, Do you have that in the works? Do I need to keep no, that? Like, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> you know, but I hear like I remember, you know, people have done it in the past. Uh, um, I remember when when Wayport did the siren, which was the small ace, 
and there was like the women's boat, but it was like one boat for women. And it just assumed that all women are the same size and paddle the same way. And it was the but smallest the version of the ace. And there's plenty of women who are bigger and heavier than men. You know, so it was just like this completely like it's, it's a marketing thing, right? It's a marketing stunt. Oh, it's, it's a woman's boat. It's a marketing stunt. It's the same thing, beginners, right? Like beginner boat. You can't have one boat that's for all beginners. You can have boats which are going to be well suited. So maybe put, what are the best boats for beginners instead of what is the best boat? Well, so yeah, exactly. So, and it, so in my opinion, the best boats are going to be things like I was saying between about seven to eight feet. I don't think you want to be in something longer than eight feet. I don't think you want to be in something shorter than seven feet. Longer than eight feet, it's a lot of boat. The features have to be too big in order to do anything other than just go down. If you want to do any kind of surfing or anything for the boat to fit in it, the features got to be big. Under seven feet, they're getting slow to paddle. So you're not able to feel a boat car through an eddy. You can't feel a boat accelerate. You know, where you come out of an eddy, you cross the jet of water, you turn and make the move, even if it's just a drop this big. And the, 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 the thing that you're going across is, you know, it's six feet, seven feet wide. You still want to feel that boat accelerate. And then once it's accelerated and it's up on a plane, then the feeling of turning the boat and then getting your weight back and making the drop, right? And even if it's beginner stuff, that's how you progress is doing these things. So when you're in a six and a half foot, six foot boat, it's not carrying its speed. There's no glide in the water, yeah. um, even though it fits into tiny features, you know, um, but you really are then restricted to floating down the river to the next little wave and then floating down the river to the next little wave because the boat won't move around the river. And then when you're over eight feet, it's paddling down the river and then sitting in the eddy while everybody else surfs the little feature because your boat doesn't fit. And right. the boat, that, the feature that your boat does fit in is too big and scary. And if you do a wrong edge, the water's moving too fast and it is going to flip you. Whereas you can be in a tiny feature, lean upstream, and the boat's just going to go, uh, 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 but you're probably not going to flip, right? It's, oh, 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 you know, they're going to do that, that grabbing the hole of the boat with their paddle in the air, you know, you know, it's yeah. like, Standing on a balcony, the whole balcony is falling off the side of the building and you're grabbing the railing. It's not going to help, man. The whole thing's going. People I've been grabbing, there, their, grabbing the, <laughs> on the side of their boat with their hand. Yep. Like, I'm quite sure what you're trying to accomplish there, but it ain't going to happen. I feel like <laughs> and I still everybody do that. Does it, right? Everybody does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I can make fun of people, but I guarantee you I did yep. it at some point when I was learning, you know, for sure. That's good. Um, so, you know, so it's finding these boats, you know, you want the ends to be small enough to where they're not getting smacked around. If you've got too much volume in the nose, water's hitting that and it's smacking it around. Whereas yeah. if the nose of the boat can pierce the wave and then the volume in the model lifts it up and over, it's going to be a dry enough ride, but it's not getting bounced around. If you've got too much volume in the ends of the boat, when you try to surf, the water is pushing the boat sideways. You've got the little hole behind you. Even if it's a green wave, once you're on it, it makes the water white. Yeah. And then it gets on the deck and then it's trying to push the boat out because all the volume, like, you know, a bar of soap, right, in your hand. Yeah. So you're trying to front surf and that volume is trying to push out sideways. So the whole time you're fighting your boat that's going sideways like this. So you pull on a wave and it goes, and you go flying off the wave. I can't understand why I can't keep this straight. Because the boat's too big. Yep. So you want to have low volume in the back and the front if you want to do any back surfing, but that's secondary. It's better to have a little bit more foot drum and comfort and a drier ride, but not too much. You can never in the nose. Yeah. Um, but you don't want it to be so small in the back that it's catching and grabbing and flipping you. So, right. you know, you want a boat that's got volume behind the seats, about mid deck, and then it gets smaller in the tail volume through two thirds of the front deck. And then just in the nose, you just kind of take it out. The longer the boat, the sooner you want to be bringing it down. So it's not getting smacked around. Um, wide enough to be stable, but not so wide. It's hard to roll. One of the greatest teaching boats of all time was the RPM, right? Because Dagger RPM. Yep. Dagger RPM, because even though it sucked at everything else, I mean, unless you were wanting to be squirting your way down the upper green, okay, which is, you know, right. it's great for that. But 
it rolled easily. Any idiot could roll the RPM because it's a cigar. It just, it's got no initial stability. It's tippy as hell, but it's easy to roll, right? So you don't want to have a boat that's too wide and stable, not because you don't want the stability, but because they're too hard to roll. So like in the booster, it's an inch narrower than the glide, even though it's a beginner boat. It has less initial stability than the glide. The glide does feel more planted, but the boost is a lot easier boat to roll, a lot easier. It's massive, the difference. The deck is more rounded. It's less squared off on the deck than, than the glide. Because so it'll roll. You know, so once does you start to have all like the chalions along the side, or is this a full, full planing well, hole? Well, it's a planing hole. Like the boost is a planing hole. It's got a full-on planing hole, flat hole with the edges, but then the side walls are rounded. And then the deck is rounded, right? And it's a little bit narrow. So from upside down, from there all the way to there, it's it's round. It's just it rolls to that point. So nothing that to catch point, on with your edges. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, edges don't catch. That's a mis that's mis that's a carryover from the nineties when. People first started putting edges on displacement boats and they would catch and flip people. But it wasn't that the edges were catching. It's that the water was sticking to the displacement hull and then this edge was there. Think of a surfboard. Where are the fins? The From fins the are where the edges are. The back oh, of the board has a hard the edge. edge. That's where yeah. the fins are. The center of the board doesn't have a hard edge. It's round because the round is what grips the water. It's not sliding. The center of the board is gripping because it's got a round rail. The fins are in the back of the board where it has a hard edge because if you don't put the fins there, it's slipping all over the place. You can't get it to catch. It won't catch. Edges don't catch. Edges release. Round catches. This whole idea that edges catch is this, it's this dinosaur from the late 90s that's still edges in our car launch today. Edges don't catch. They release. Low volume catches. So if you have a low deck, okay, and you've got this, these edges in the back of the board in the hull, and you've got a low deck with that edge on the seam line, the edge on the deck, it's not that the edge on the deck is catching, it's that the edge on the deck is making a more defined break point for the water to load onto the deck and do this. That's why it's catching. If you go from this shape and you round it down, this curve, the water, it's a more progressive flow of the water onto the deck. So it's not like a light switch. It's on and off. It's like a dimmer, right? So progressively, pressure comes on. Progressively, the pressure comes down. So having a rounder, less defined edge on the back deck is less grabby, not because of the edge, but because of the angle of the deck itself that that edge creates. It's not the edge that's flipping you. It's the flat deck. The edges on the hull don't flip you. They don't catch. They release. They release. <laughs> edges release. They make the water. Water can't, can't make the curve. So it releases. Edges slide. What catches is a flat sidewall. So if you have a really flat sidewall, water hits that sidewall and goes boom. It's not the edge that's catching. It's the flat sidewall. You tuck your sidewalls. And the water hits the sidewalk and it goes under the boat. And the harder your edge, the more effectively it's going to go under the boat. The rounder that edge, the less effectively it's going to go under the boat and the more it's going to grab you. So if you have a rounded sidewall to a slightly rounded edges, your boat's going to be much grabbier than if you have not vertical but flat angled sidewalls to a super hard edge. That's going to be more forgiving. But try and get people's heads around that one. It's counter to everything. You're blowing my mind. Yeah, yeah, you're totally blowing my mind right now. Yeah. Edges no don't idea. catch. They release. Because I'm a, everyone makes fun <laughs> of me. I'm a, I'm a Jackson guy. So, like, everyone makes fun of me about the edges and stuff. But now I have information. I can be like, no, no. Those <laughs> edges are great. <laughs> I'm just a bad voter. It's not the edges. <laughs> so, the antics, it's not the edges on the yeah. hole that are grabbing when you're getting flipped. It's the water piling onto the deck. Yeah. That's what's flipping you on the antics, right? And if it's the center, like if you're side surfing a wave and it catches and flips, the antics has a rounded sidewall. It has yep. a slightly rounded hull. 
and the edges or everything's kind of flowy, right? The edges are there, yeah. but everything's flowing around them. Well, that flow doesn't release. So it's just loading so, up on the kayak. So when you hit something sideways in the antics, okay, for example, compared to say a glide, it's more likely to catch and flip you than the glide is if it's the center of the boat because the edges on the glide are more aggressive, making, making it harder for the water to hold and it's releasing more effectively. The glide will flip more than the antics on the back because the deck is lower and it has less top curve. The deck of the antics curves down towards the rail. So the rail is less sharp, but it's not the rail itself. It's the curve of the deck that makes it more forgiving than the stern on the glide, which is flat. That's why I encourage um, beginners to, to get into a planing hole because um, they're looser, they're more forgiving, they're easier to turn, they're easier to surf, um, they're more predictable, um, they're not as fast in a straight line. A displacement, all other things being equal, same outline, same rocker, same volume distribution, uh, or almost same volume distribution. It can't be exactly the same because displacement, you're taking out volume where you're getting rid of the edges, right? Um, but close enough, a displacement boat is going to be faster in a sprint. Because, because it's not grabbing, it's releasing. It's because, well, what happens is, think about this, right? So you've got a molecule in the front of the boat, and you're trying to move that molecule out to the side of the boat. And a planing hull, it's got to move all of it out to the side immediately or under the boat immediately. Whereas a displacement hull can move some down, some there, some there, some there. It's a more efficient displacement of the various water molecules around the hull that's moving through the water. So displacement is going to get up to speed faster and it's going to require less energy to maintain speed. Where planing holes get faster then displacement holes is when you hit what's known as hull speed. So you start building a weight off the nose of the boat. And eventually the nose of your boat starts to try and climb that weight. Everybody's felt that, right? You're paddling as hard as you can. You feel like the nose is coming up and the back is dragging, right? So let's, let's ignore depth. Let's say that you're in water that's bottomless so we don't have to deal with bottom effect, okay? So um, the faster you go, the higher the amount of energy output are required for decreasing amounts of increase in speed. So as you approach hull speed, and hull speed is that moment when the boat climbs onto its bow wake and planes. To plane a displacement hull takes massive amounts of energy to get a boat to plane, to get onto its bow wake. You can't really paddle a boat onto a plane. Even if the best planing hull kayaks, you're not gonna paddle onto its own bow wake. We just don't, we can't put that kind of power out and certainly not for long enough to get it on there and to keep it on there, right? So when you're paddling, all boats are displacing, whether it's a planing hole or displacement hole, they're all in displacement mode, all of them, all the time. And the displacement boats are more efficient. But when you come out of an eddy and the water's screaming down the river and I want to cross the river and I want to get to the other side and then make a very rapid turn, a planing hole, I come out of the eddy you got water that's scooting down the river at 20 kilometers an hour. I'm doing five kilometers an hour upstream. When I hit the current, so now I've got a total speed of 25, the 20 going down, my five going up. I hit 25 kilometers an hour, I'm planing. And the boat just goes boom, and it takes off across that jet of water. And it's loose because it's planing. So I can go screaming across, get to the other side, and before it comes off the plane, make my turn. And then it drops off the plane, and now I can go paddling down the drop. Whereas in a displacement boat, the whole time my boat's in the water, I'm displacing across. I've got dragged the whole way across. I'm very rapidly losing ground because I'm trying to paddle against 20 kilometers of water coming down at me, which you can't do. So you start to lose ground more quickly, and then you've got more boat in the water, so that turn at the end is harder to make to then go over whatever it is. So a planing whole boat, even though in a straight-line sprint in flat water, is much less efficient than a displacement hull boat, which is why K1 sprint boats are not planing. They're all displacement hulls because it's not faster. Um, even though theoretically a displacement hull boat is faster, 
in practicality, you're never really paddling down a river in, in laminar flow enough to benefit from a displacement hull. Because even if you're paddling down river, you're, you're going over all kinds of stuff. You, you know, you're not, you're not efficiently displacing water. It's like laminar water's going flow out. Is the flow that's right above, above the above. surface water, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. the water's going this way and that way and it's yeah. swirling around. You go up a wave and only half the boat's in the water. Then you come down the wave and the boat goes smack and the water's all the way up to the seam line of the boat. Nothing's displacing down the boat. It's all squirting out the sides. So you're not, you're not displacing efficiently. The only time it is like if there's a big waterfall and you peel out of the eddy and you've got six boat lengths of basically flat water with just laminar flow um, that you're sprinting down to then launch off the thing. Yeah, sure. Displacement displacement's going to be moving faster when you get to the edge of the drop. Yes, hundred percent. But when but you that, land, that, that's the real situation where that's going to be the case, though. Otherwise, it's not. When going you to be land, the, the planing hole is going to, and the displacement hole is going to go because it's going to hit, it's going to stick, and it's going to go <clears throat> because the planing hole is going to go. <laughs> So is, that's the why hammer, we're... is the hammer a plane hole? Yeah, yeah. I gotta I gotta check that boat out, man. Not even just to shoot <laughs> sparks up your ass or anything. I, I actually do want to check that boat. <laughs> it's a fun boat. So, you know, um it's edges on a creek are a bad idea because if you're sliding down something sideways at a 45 degree angle, and there's a rock, and you hit that rock with your edges, the boat goes. Gunk, and it just stops because it's whack that edge. And I might spin you this way or spin you that way or flip you over the top, right? Whereas a boat that's round is going to hit this thing. The boat's going to go boom like this. It's going to bend, and you're probably going to go over the rock. So round boats on a creek make perfect sense, except every time you land coming off a drop, planning hole boats move away from the drop, and displacement hole boats do this. So you want a planing hole boat on a creek, not a displacement. Uh, so you got to pick your battles is what it comes down to. You got to pick your battles. So, so it's the athletic abilities of the boater, where they're at in the progression, then maybe the boat design based off of how that paddler actually paddles. And then you still want to think about, okay, am I going on a creek? Am I going down a river? Okay, so that's the part we haven't got into, right? What is it that attracted you to paddling? Did you see people running waterfalls and you go, oh, I want to do that? Or did you see people play boating and go, oh, I want to do that? What was it that attracted you? Or did you see people going down a river and it looks like a beautiful wilderness experience? You saw a video of people running the Grand Canyon. You go, oh, like I've been a hiker for years and years. You know, and I ride enduro motorcycles and, but in summer it's too hot. Like I'd like to do a water sport and that looks fun, you know? So what, what attracted you to kayaking? And that's going to have a big influence, right? So if you're a beginner and you go, I, I saw the play boating and I was like, oh, I want to do that. Well, if you're going to learn to paddle at the Charlotte Whitewater Festival, at the Charlotte Whitewater course, and you're a beginner and you're that go-getter kind of guy, you could start at a six-foot boat, no problem. If you're not going to get discouraged by flipping over and you, you learn your role quickly, you'll be fine, right? But you're not going to learn all those other things that we were talking about. So if you want to stay from that seven to eight-foot range, you're going to want to be in the seven-foot boat because that's going to be the closest thing for a beginner that's going to allow you to move around the river, learn how to catch eddies, learn how to ferry glide, how to make moves, but in a boat that's shorter, so you can immediately start playing in smaller waves and start mucking around with doing that kind of stuff, right? If you saw Dane Jackson launching off of that thing, thing that Dane Jackson launches off of, which, <laughs> anyway, eventually I'll get my head around how good that kid is. He's, a, he's, a he's not even a kid, he's 30. Anyway, um, anyway, so, and that, you're like, oh, I want to do that. Well, you're probably going to want to start off in something closer to eight feet. So you, you've got that longer boat, you've got that glide, you've got, you know, you're going to be more focused anyway on running the river, um, of, of progressing in making little moves in class three and then easy class four. 
but you don't know for a fact that that's actually what you're going to like. You think that's what you like, but you might actually end up suddenly loving surfing. So you don't want to start on a nine foot boat because then the features that you want to learn to surf are too big. So eight yeah. foot gives you that glide, gives you that ability to start progressing in your river running, but you can still play in small features. And you might find out that you actually like playing more than running drops. And the seven foot boat, boat guy who was attracted to the sport by the freestyle stuff goes, man, I just love paddling down the river. I like going. I enjoy putting on with my friends and spending four hours going down the river. That's what I found that I love. And a seven foot boat will make that enjoyable with a six foot boat. Well, yeah, you no. Know? So that's why I say kind of seven to eight feet. It's a nice, it's a nice range. Thank you so much for doing this. I can't thank you. Yeah, so and uh, good luck editing that down to something that you can actually feed to people. I will do you proud. I will not let you down, I promise. <laughs> oh, thank you so you much, Lord. Thank yep, you so cool much. Cool thing. Have a good one. All right. Thank you, bud. Bye. See you, man. First started paddling, I tried all these different types of creek boats.